Hey everyone, welcome to Popular Cruising. I am your host Jason Luckert, here with a deck-by-deck -deck tour and review of scenic luxury cruises and tours, Scenic Eclipse. The ship marks the first ever ocean vessel for the brand, and quite a luxurious expedition one at that. Let's first start with the vessel specifications. Scenic Eclipse is an all-inclusive luxury ship, and is the first of the namesake Discovery Yachts, which launched in 2019. It measures in at a tonnage of 17,085, with a guest capacity of 228, resulting in a very voluminous passenger space ratio of 74.93. As for its accommodations, we stayed on the Deluxe Veranda Suite, a category which sizes in between 344 and 366 square feet, with fancy touchscreen buttons. The room and super plush bed are teddy bear approved, in part due to universal electrical outlets and USB charging ports, thankfully at both nightstands. The only annoyance is decorative side rails make it difficult to tuck suitcases underneath. But if you like fully adjustable and positionable mattresses, you're sure in for a treat. Also great is a large amount of closet storage, hanging, drawer, and shelving-wise plus fully stocked minibar and pantry cabinet. At the vanity desk, there are additional charging outlets nestled behind, and a premium Dyson hairdryer available in the drawer. The neat television is hidden inside a mirror, before turning on with a large selection of on-demand content to watch. We only wish this space featured a dining table and chairs. A better table is actually offered outside, on the balcony. If you haven't already done so, please feel free to subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell icon to be notified when all our new cruise videos are posted. And as for the bathroom, the toilet and shower compartments are quite spacious and feature a lovely rain shower head, but cubic hardware is difficult to grip. Most annoyingly though, the stylish sink is shallow and all basin with little surrounding counter space, but at least there are always usable hooks included on the wall. Then slightly larger in size are Grand Deluxe Veranda Suites at 409 to 430 square feet. Rooms are a pinch wider and come with a bigger walk-in closet and same standard bathrooms. Larger still are 495 to 538 square foot spa suites that also have a walk-in closet and bedroom space better delineated from a living area that includes a more usable seating alcove. Plus the whole side length of the suite is the bathroom, separated into a toilet and sink compartment, an even roomier shower with bench, double vanity sink, and welcoming bathtub with a view to the balcony and horizon beyond. Panorama suites have even more room to spread out, with a total of 1,184 square feet of space for a forward-facing corner dining and living room, plus balcony wrapping around. Separate bedrooms also feature a walk-in closet, and bathrooms showcase more practical oval sinks with counter space in between, as well as an oval tub to match, and sizable shower with an even fancier rain shower head. Of course, the biggest on board are the pair of 2,099 square foot owner's penthouse suites, also featured at forward corners for dining and living, as well as a huge balcony, this time complete with its own whirlpool. Besides the side bathroom, there's also a grand master bedroom, another walk-in closet, and palatial bathroom, showcasing a shower with dual heads no less. Plus separate toilet compartment, freestanding bathtub, and additional seating with a great view. When you're ready to book your scenic luxury expedition cruise, we recommend doing so through our sponsor, Fairy Godmother Vacations, who will magically take care of all your trip planning absolutely for free. To get a complimentary quote, just click on the link right here, or call the number or email the address displayed below. Now onto the onboard activities, followed by dining and entertainment, all illustrated deck by deck. Down on deck four is the guest services desk, where excursions and expeditions, such as two onboard helicopters, can be booked. Off to the side of the chic, boutique hotel-like scenic lounge and central lobby, where high ceilings and high contrast glossy finishes convey a lovely large space. 
and will surely return here soon to order a complimentary libation. There's not much in the way of shopping on board, but a small boutique does offer a limited selection of retail items for sale. Before heading up to Deck 5, where the Observation Lounge and Library are located. I generally love an indoor scenic venue, and this one is certainly inviting. However, it's sadly positioned too low on the ship and behind the long bow, such that it is a challenge to actually observe from. As another example of the ship's occasional tendency towards form over function. Better at least is the Observation Terrace just in front preparing over the sides of the ship, as well as the very front. As only my 360 degree camera on an extension pole can reach as far to view the bulbous bow as it plows through glassy waters. Up a level on deck 6 at the stern is the Spa Vitality Pool, the ship's only outdoor pool, which is free to use and gaze upon the soothing wake on a sea day. Just inside is the census spa itself, where facilities like the relaxation room are complimentary to use. Extending also to the dry sauna, steam room, infrared sauna, experience shower, and chilly plunge pool. Only treatments, like massages, cost extra, as do nail and hair salon services, the latter with vistas to the sea. Additionally on Deck 7, there is a tranquil yoga and Pilates room to freely use. as well as the traditional gym and fitness area. With all kinds of exercise equipment. And thanks to an open bridge policy, the wheelhouse on this level is available for guests to visit when navigationally safe to do so. As you'll see a bit later, we even saw humpback whales breaching from here. Heading even higher on Deck 10, a wonderful set of cabanas are open to use. Overlooking the passing scenery, as well as a pair of Ford Vitality Pools. Really just two refreshing whirlpools, with a stretch of sun loungers in between. And off the back, you can look down onto the helipad and helicopter hangars of Deck 8. Scenic Eclipse is super unique to offer chopper tours straight from the ship. Even if you choose to not pay for one of the very few extras and go up for yourself, there are opportunities to check out the hangars and the flight equipment up close. Seeing what they look like, both empty and full. before perhaps getting your picture taken by the aircraft and learning more about their operations from the knowledgeable and friendly pilots. Of course, I would highly recommend splurging on a 30-minute flight to get a vantage point like no other, becoming airborne from a moving cruise ship, as we did taking off from San Francisco, California, as well as Seattle, Washington, to view the famed Space Needle and other cruise ships. all with great sight lines in every direction. Looking at houses, marinas, and other airfields and vessels below, before returning to our very own home away from home. The scenic eclipse in all her glory. Now that's a sight you rarely get of your own cruise ship as seen as we begin to land again in San Fran with Alcatraz and the cityscape behind. You will surely feel like Maverick from Top Gun, or James Bond even, if you take such an awesome excursion. 
Our itinerary was not a typical expedition one, so the Discovery Center, Mudroom, on Deck 3 was not in use for anything other than storage. But at least here you can get a look at it. As well as the marina, also on the lower level, where paddleboards, kayaks, and zodiacs are accessible. as well as another unique toy in the form of a submersible. Meanwhile, dining is another hallmark of Scenic, and beginning back on top of Eclipse is the Panorama Bar on Deck 10. Most alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages are included on board, here and elsewhere, such as at the Yacht Club Buffet on Deck 7. The space is light and airy, and can be made further al fresco with the opening of side patio doors and windows. But again, some chairs without backs are an unusual choice for a restaurant. There is of course additional outdoor dining when the weather is warmer. Food here is honestly hit or miss, with some items tasting a bit bland but there is no shortage of awesome breads. Nor various salads. Desserts. And of course gelatos. Even a tasty avocado one. Back at the observation lounge and library on deck five is an inviting tea bar with all sorts of loose varieties. Also on this level is the interactive scenic epicure for cooking demonstrations. Like the one we attended to see how butter chicken is prepared. As my all-time favorite Indian dish, I was eager to see the process from expert chefs as they collected tons of ingredients and spices to make a thick gravy. That the pre-charred chicken was later mixed in. And suffice it to say, the finished product was delicious. Farther down a hall, lined with cool oversized wine labels, is also the Azure Bar and Cafe for quick alternative fare throughout the day. Here we enjoyed cookies and coffees, complete with the ship logo neatly applied, as well as refreshing salads the line signature tasty pizzas, and a yummy Aussie burger, all of which are available from room service also. On the opposite side is Lumiere, another complimentary restaurant on board, as are all the others, but requiring advance reservations be made. Before enjoying eight course set menus with choice of entree and dessert, patrons partake in a starter of champagne and caviar. Then an amuse bouche is first followed by the delicious likes of French onion soup a Parisian salad, even more caviar, savory pastries, a palate cleansing sorbet, tender duck entree, and an awesome French cheese croissant to finish. Downstairs on deck four is Coco's, which is broken down into three sections, including sushi, only requiring reservations be made to enjoy traditional miso soup and edamame before watching the chefs prepare their favorites for a dish full of their choice sashimi, sushi, and rolls. We even asked if they would surprise us with a special one of theirs, and they certainly did not disappoint. And a match of gelato hidden below cotton candy made for a great send-off. Meanwhile, the main section of Coco's is available at dining times with open seating.
to sample tasty Asian fusion dishes such as these. But easily the best part of Coco's is Night Market, a teppanyaki style grill that alternates between Asian, Indian, and Middle Eastern tasting menus. Reservations are required for this experience as well, and it is another standout, with freshly presented courses described as they are served. The Indian one is particularly exceptional, with a wide variety of flavors and clever preparations. These are great flavors you won't soon forget. All seen assembled right before you. And what can I say about the final dessert? except how cool is rolled gelato and popping corn. Coming together with a dash of special dust. The other open seating option on Eclipse, not requiring advanced reservations, is Elements, essentially the ship's main dining room, complete with a dedicated cheese refrigerator, no less. Specializing in Italian and other international cuisines in a bright and artsy environment, Offerings here include daily risottos and pastas, savory soups, and a variety of rotating proteins, as well as sides, before enjoying another daily dessert item, rotating sweet cannoli. Hands down, the most exceptional meal on board is the invite-only chef's table experience nestled right in the galley and reserved for loyalists and the guests in the highest category suites. The 11 course set menu is one of the most creative meals I've ever enjoyed. Cleverly playing with ingredient themes and especially interactive elements, like spraying down this one to convert the puffy part into a vinaigrette. or taking the time, as it were, to properly marinate a Peruvian ceviche. The one I think is the most creative, despite my usual aversion to tobacco smoke, makes a burrito look like a cigar that is actually a tasty taquito served with edible ash. It is just one of several smoky dishes that make quite a dramatic entry at the table. Another super clever protein is this salmon, made to appear purple before being rained on. And even Wagyu beef is served over hot stones and torched to one's preferred cooking temperature before yet another marvelous Indian dish. And a pre-dessert. prior to the main dessert, full of all kinds of goodies. Some that playfully go splat. And last but not least on deck four is a return to the scenic lounge where its bar stylishly awaits. With a self-service coffee bar off to the side if you prefer but I rather like all the dramatically backlit liquor bottles and awesome bartenders who are able to recreate one of my favorite but lesser known drinks, a gold rush with bourbon, honey syrup, and lemon juice. As expected on an expedition focused ship, entertainment on board is less extensive than on larger cruise ships, but the great house pianist in the lounge plays a wide variety of tunes to pass the time by. And the theater also on deck four is oriented in the round 
with some seriously welcoming chairs, the center ones of which even fully recline. When taking in lectures, or getting to know the cruise director and staff. She even performs a talented one-woman show that is more impressive than most run-of-the-mill cruise director-driven performances. With canned but well-orchestrated and recorded backing music, naturally it's tour talks and briefings that are largely hosted here getting guests ready for expeditions to come. Like when we saw an aforementioned humpback whale breaching from the navigation bridge windows, which is always a treat to behold. In Eureka, California, Eclipse entered ghostly from the fog to be welcomed by a terrific local jazz band. Before I headed to the Redwood Skywalk, part of the Sequoia Park Zoo. Admittedly, I went on this excursion specifically because it was reminiscent of Endor from the Star Wars film franchise. Yes, indeed, I am that big of a nerd and proud of it. I mean, just check out how cool all of this looks. Ewoks were surely hiding just around the bend, although I didn't see any. We also left our hearts in San Francisco, as it were, before sailing below the iconic Golden Gate Bridge. And now for our concluding scenic eclipse pros and cons. What we disliked as a pain in the ass, so to speak, were the several disappointing instances of form over function, especially the fact that you can't clearly observe from the observation lounge, and the occasionally bland dishes at the buffet. But what we liked and can take a bow are the otherwise fantastic and creative culinary arts on board the very unique helicopter flight opportunities, and of course the long list of all-inclusive amenities and tours. Thanks so much for watching. If you would, as it really does help support us, please like this video with a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel while hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos. Watch our other ones and visit popularcruising.com.